Good morning, everyone. For today's devotion, I will start by singing ancient words. Um, to me, this song reminds us that as long as we follow Jesus's words, we can lead a fulfilling life. And even though those words are ancient from such a long time ago, they're basically timeless and still apply to modern day life. And that's one reason why I chose this song is because I think it's really important to remember that. That, that's, that in itself is just a really good sort of general way to live your life and you can't really go wrong living your life through Jesus' words. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In this Easter season, I want to take a walk through the stories of the resurrection, the stories from the time that Jesus was raised until 40 days later when he ascended into glory. I want to look at those stories in this Easter season because I think it helps us understand what it means to be defined, not by this virus, but by the good news of the resurrection. So yesterday, I had us take a look at the story of the two disciples walking with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. And today, I want to look at that story again at a different part of it. You'll remember the two disciples were walking home from Jerusalem to Emmaus on the first Easter afternoon. They had heard the good news, but they really didn't believe it yet. Jesus joined them, and for some reason, we don't know why, their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And they were lamenting the fact that they had hoped that Jesus was the one to redeem Israel. Well, Jesus listened a while, and then he said to them, you are so foolish and slow of heart to believe. Don't you see that it was necessary 
for the Messiah to suffer and die and on the third day be raised. And then we're told he opened to them the scriptures and he interpreted everything in the scriptures from Moses through the prophets to that day concerning him. What Jesus was up to on the road to Emmaus is he was helping those two disciples see God at work in the scriptures so that they could see God at work in their world. And that's what he does with us as well. When he opens us to the scriptures, what he's doing is he is showing us his presence in the scriptures so that we can see his presence with us now. The more we see him at work then and there, the more alert we will be to what he's up to here and now. We study ancient Jerusalem and ancient uh, Israel, not in its, for its own sake, not, not to be able to say that we know Bible history and we can memorize Bible passages. The reason that we do that is so that by seeing him at work then and there, we can more easily see he, how he's at work with us here and now. I've been doing this for the last 35 years, studying the scriptures so that by understanding what Jesus was up to then and there, I can better see what he's up to here and now. Now, I know that uh, right now there are many of you who have more than enough things to do with trying to work from home and have the kids do school at home and trying to have a family life. And you may really not have uh, any extra time, but there are others more like me who do have time now. And one of the things I really wanna encourage you to do is to take a deeper dive into the scriptures. And there are all kinds of ways that you can do that. But one of the best ways I've found is to go to a website called thebibleproject.com. That uh, website has all kinds of short videos. There are videos on every one of the books of the Bible, on key themes in the Bible, key words in the Bible, on Bible background, all designed to help us find Jesus in the scriptures because the creators of the Bible Project believe that the Bible is one continuous, coherent narrative, and all of us, all of it leads us to Jesus. I believe that's true as well, that we can start almost anywhere in the scriptures, and sooner or later, it will lead us to Jesus. And so I want to invite you to do that, and I want you to do it so that during these days, we are not defined by a pandemic, we are not defined by a virus, but rather we are defined by the good news of the resurrection, that we know and we believe that Jesus is alive and well, and in the midst of all that's happening in our world today, he is still doing his loving, saving work among us. He is blessing us, healing us, forgiving us, leading us, comforting us, doing all the things now that we see him doing in the biblical story. So pray for the Holy Spirit to come, to open to you the scriptures, so that you can see in them our living, loving Lord, and that he can put your heart at rest and your mind at peace, knowing that all things are in his gracious, everlasting hands. Now I invite you to pray with me. As always, I invite you to do whatever it is that helps you to center yourself, to still your mind and heart, so perhaps a candle, closing your eyes, uh, stilling your body, relaxing it, and resting in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So I'll give us some time for silent prayer, and then lead us in prayer and in the Lord's Prayer.
Gracious Lord, we thank you that you have conquered death and the grave and that you are alive and at work in our world today. We ask, Lord, that uh, you give us the grace to see you in the word so that we may also see you today in our world. We ask, Lord, that you open to us the scriptures so that we can be more alert and aware and attentive to your presence in us and among us and between us. Lord, we lift up to you um, all those needs and concerns that we have, especially um, for those who are most near and dear to us. And we ask that um, you answer us as you see best. Uh, we are confident, Lord, that you know what's best for us and, we, and you will do what's best. And so we lift up all these things, everything that's on our minds and hearts, we lift it up to you in the prayer that you yourself have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now as you go through this day, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, beside you to befriend you, beneath you to uphold you, behind you to defend you, above you to watch over, and within you to give you his peace and the blessing of the almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in the peace of Christ. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.